Welcome everyone. Good morning from New York, good afternoon from London and Edinburgh, and good evening from Dubai and Baku. We are delighted to host this salon series on cultural and societal diplomacy in partnership with the Azerbaijan Tourism Board. I am April Gao, Global Policy Advisor at Broach Associates. Thank you for joining us today for part three of our salon series to hear about looking forward the next generation of Azerbaijan art, which spans from 2011 to the present day. To recap, in part one, we explored the 20th century beginnings of the modern art movement in Azerbaijan with Afsana Tahirova and Leslie Gray speaking about Soviet domination of Azerbaijan for much of the 20th century and how that played out in artistic expression. We saw how this influenced and inculcated the art movement of social realism, which in turn forced artists underground who then created art for themselves. In part two, we move forward in time in our discussion with Leslie Gray in conversation with the artist Sabina Shikleskaya, whose career as an artist and curator spans the period from 1983 to the present. That discussion focused on the tumultuous 20 year period from 1990 to 2010, from just after independence and the disappearance of repression followed by the country opening up their economy to the West and how all of that impacted and eventually supported the arts community. And now I'm very pleased that we will complete our salon series with part three in discussion with Leslie Gray and Afsana Taharova, which covers the period from 2011 to the present as we look forward to the next generation of Azerbaijani artists and their work. Culture, the arts, and humanities are undoubtedly some of man's highest achievements. They provide the greatest source of national identity, pride, and the feeling of belonging to a special place on this small planet. Art nurtures creativity, innovation, and cultural diversity. When artists and artistic freedom are supported, encouraged, and protected, art plays an important role in sharing knowledge and encouraging curiosity and dialogue. Furthering the development of art also furthers our means to achieve a free and peaceful world. So today you will hear more about the emergence of artistic freedom as played out in the contemporary art movement of Azerbaijan. I now would like to introduce our host for this salon, Mrs. Barbara Tober, Chairman Emeritus of the Museum of Arts and Design in New York. Barbara is a lifelong patron of the arts and has helped many artists with their careers. For over 30 years, she was editor-in-chief of Brides Magazine in New York and has traveled every corner of the world and collected art along the way. We are delighted that Barbara has joined us to introduce our two guest speakers. Barbara, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, April. I'm delighted to add my welcome to our international audience and uh, to the two fabulous and distinguished speakers, Leslie Gray and Afsana Tahirova. Uh, Leslie Gray is a Dubai-based curator and researcher specializing in contemporary art and museums in the Arabian Gulf and Caspian Sea regions through her work with the advisory firm Baker Langham. In 2019, she finished her PhD in museum studies and uh, from the Uni University College London, focusing on contemporary and art practice in the GCC and Caspian Sea regions and has a research background in anthropology, contemporary art museum studies and Islamic art history. In addition to her professional curatorial projects, she has contributed to Art Asia Pacific Magazine and the Art Asia Pacific Almanacs 2016-2020 and, and collaborates on curatorial and writing projects in Baku. She has recently completed her a forthcoming book on contemporary art in Azerbaijan in partnership with Varvox and Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan Tourism Bureau. 
Now, one tiny second here. Um, Afghana, Afsana Chahirova, uh, whom I've already met on this wonderful program, is the founder and managing director of Caspia Contemporary, uh, a project established in London with an aim to bring exceptional works of art influenced by cultural and history of Azerbaijan to the global art world. Afsana has over 10 years of regional and international management expertise and an MBA degree from London Business School. Coming from a family of art lovers, her passion and art cultural heritage of her country was matched with extensive business experience to launch Caspia Contemporary. She has it all. She's a guest lecturer at Sotheby's Institute of Art and winner of the Exceptional Talent Visa endorsed by the Arts Council of England and is an emerging leader in the field of arts. Our salon today sets the stage for the final discussion of this three-part series, Looking Forward, the Next Generation of Azerbaijani Art. I am looking forward to a lively discussion on these new on this new generation of Azerbaijani artists who have broken with the forms and materiality of the past and charted a new way for themselves on the global scene. Uh, these artists, are exploring frictions between tradition and modernity, expressions of gender and social life, and the role of faith and community. It's a big, big subject altogether. Uh, they are creating a new discourse with the world around them and are shaping the future that they want for themselves. Leslie Gray will share research from her important new book entitled Azerbaijan Contemporary Art and Afsana Tahirova will take us through the artist's journey who are working on this new and supportive environment of diverse artistic expression and openness. And now I would like to hand it over to the two of you, ladies. Hi, thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you, April. And hello, Afsana. And as um, Barbara and April mentioned, this is the third and final part of our series where we get to um, take you through some recent developments in the contemporary art community in Azerbaijan. And so we'll start off where April and Barbara mentioned, so around 2011. So in the 2010s, there was really an explosion of Azerbaijani contemporary art and a new generation of artists pushing the boundaries of traditional media and concepts. Azerbaijani art is now shown all over the world in art fairs and biennales and exhibitions and Azerbaijani artists are well known regionally and globally. So Afsana, to get us started, how would you describe Azerbaijani art today? Um, what are some of the key themes and trends about the artists and what do they explore? What makes them unique? Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, April. Thank you, Leslie, for the introduction. Um, yes, I'm very excited to be here uh, because today we will be talking about very contemporary Azerbaijani art, everything that has been happening and is happening after 2010. So on part one, we took the approach of looking at art industry and art sector from the individual lives, the personal stories and careers of selected artists. This time, we will be taking an approach of looking at general trends that are happening and explaining those trends in terms of the selected artworks. So today, I want to talk about the major trends that I see happening in the art industry. And these are not just trends that are happening uh, separately in the art industry. It's happening generally in the society in Azerbaijan and in the wider region and, and globally. So the first trend, the major trend that I see happening is this conversation around the tradition. What does the tradition mean to us? How do we celebrate or even reject the tradition? How do we maintain the tradition? And can we maintain the tradition as it has been for decades or maybe even centuries? Or is the tradition subject to change inevitably? And what does it mean when the tradition changes? Does it mean progress or does it mean the loss of identity? And this is what's happening in the society in general. So the first work here that I wanted to show is work by Azerbaijani artists based in Paris, Asna Narimanbakova. 
She's the daughter of Fyodor Nariman Bakov, one of the major Azerbaijani artists of the Soviet period and beyond, who we covered quite deeply in our part one. Uh, she created this egg sculpture. She painted the egg sculpture for the Fabergé Egg Hunt charity event in London in 2012. The event was sponsored by the jeweler Fabergé. And she uh, wanted to take a very traditional approach to this painting, to this sculpture. She uh, painted everything that she thought was traditional about Azerbaijan and Baku, and she called this my Baku. So you see that there are, uh, there's the Caspian, the wave of the Caspian, there's oil rigs, there's pomegranates, which is an important cultural symbol in Azerbaijan, there is tea, and of course, there is a carpet. So everything that is traditional is on this egg sculpture painting. On the next one, uh, Vugar Moradov, oh, I love that. from his 2014 series, uh, acrylic on canvas paintings dedicated to Azerbaijani carpets. This one is flowers in, inspired by the flowers in the garden carpet from Karabakh School of Carpet Weaving in Azerbaijan. Here he has taken the design of the carpet, kept it intact, hasn't changed anything about the design or the weave, but gave it a different form, the form of the horse. And horse is also an important symbolism in Azerbaijani culture. Here he took an approach of changing the tradition delicately, but uh, giving it as little damage as possible. In the next one, which is a local jewelry brand called Resin, the founder of the brand, Resina Gurbatova, she uh, deeply researches the carpets of Azerbaijan and uses specific symbolisms from the carpets and turns them into jewelry. And here again, she uses the tradition, she changes its form, but she magnifies the meaning. So the intent here is to celebrate the tradition and to carry it on your body daily by celebrating it, taking it from the carpet and carrying it on jewelry on your body. The next one, however, is our very own Faig Ahmed. Faig Ahmed here, I've put two of his carpets here. One on the left is called Hollow. The other on the right is called Pixelet Tradition. The Hollow, part of it collapses. In pixelate tradition, the top part of it disintegrates into pixels. And when I personally look at this carpet, I have this tension that the rest of the carpet is going to disintegrate as well into pixels. So here he talks about ideas and the traditions that have formed over ages and they can change in moments. And then Zuhrat Salamzada comes into a picture where he cuts carpets into pieces. And here he says, we are losing the traditional. This is called separating the inseparable. And he's grieving the loss of the tradition by cutting these carpets into pieces. So this is, this is how I see the conversation around the tradition playing around in the society and especially in the art, art industry now. But what's also happening trend-wise is we're talking about modernity and tradition. How can these two work together? And here I have selected two works. The first one, the first two by Farid Rasulov, they are called The Concrete and Shabekia. And for information, Shabekia is a geometric um, designs on stained glass on Sheki Khan's palace in the city of Sheki in Northwestern Azerbaijan. These are designs on the palace of the local ruler in Sheki built in the 18th century. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's used a lot in, art, in modern contemporary artworks in Azerbaijan. So here and in the next one, Concrete and Shebekia, we are talking about the coexistence of the modern and the traditional. Can these coexist together? Can these stay side by side without disturbing each other, without having to marry each other? Or will it look out of place? Will it look artificial? Do they have to merge? And if the modern and the traditional merge, does one of them have to be destroyed partially or fully? The next one, which is also called Shebekia, this is an installation by Rashad al In this one, he's using the concept of duality of the light and the shadow. He's using the light to cast the shadow of Shebekia onto the wall. But in this installation, if you turn off the light, you can't see the shadow 
and once the light is off, you can't really make out from the installation what the shadow was going to be. So he's playing with the duality of reality versus the perception. And again, the traditional, once we stop giving light to the traditional, once we stop giving meaning to the traditional, does it still hold? Or does it turn into a form that doesn't make sense anymore? And to explain to the viewers what Shebekia is, I put in on the next slide, the actual Shebekia from the actual Shekihan's palace. And if you ever travel to Northwestern Azerbaijan, you should go there and visit this palace. It's small, but it's beautiful and delicately done. The next trend that I have identified, we talk a lot about how the canvas is becoming a less used medium in the art world now because the artists are using video, photo, mixed media, installations, performance, but that doesn't mean that the canvas is not being used at all. The canvas itself is changing a lot and it's turning into a medium where the stereotypes and the taboos are being challenged. And to show this from my perspective, I have selected a few artists. The first of them is Irina Eldarova. Uh, she's a pop artist, and I've selected her works where Marilyn Monroe is the centerpiece of the art. And she's always surrounded by local Azerbaijani people, the oil men, families, Marilyn Monroe in the beauty salon in Azerbaijan in the next one. And here to me, Marilyn Monroe is a universal beauty standard of the past. And here I'm posing the question, are we ready to accept that in today's diverse world? Well, the world has always been diverse. It's just that we're now recognizing it. In today's recognized diversity, are we ready to let go of beauty standards because they look so out of place amidst diversity? The next artist that I have selected for this part is Vina Ravilova. Vina Ravilova is someone, is a young artist, and she uses female nudity a lot in her paintings. Female nudity is a very central piece of her art, but very rarely do these females have faces. And if you switch to the next one, and the next one, the female bodies don't have faces, and if they have faces, it's half of the face and the eyes are closed. And to me, this is a conversation around female body. Are we ready to stop objectifying and sexualizing the female body? Are we ready to put a face on nudity and accept that the person, the personality and the body are one and they cannot be objectified or sexualized anymore? Are we ready to let the females be who they are without turning them into objects. And the next one is a challenge of another taboo in the society. This is Eninga Ramanov, his oil and canvas painting called Women in Love, where he's challenging the binary standards, where he's standing up against the censorship of love that's happening almost everywhere around the world where love is allowed to happen between a woman and a man. And he's standing up against it and saying, you know, love can happen between two women or two men or between two people, whatever their gender identity is. And this is what's happening in contemporary art canvas Azerbaijan. The next trend, I mean, as I said, like off the canvas, we're, we're seeing a lot of changes. We're seeing artists, using photography, video, mixed media, installation, performance artists are coming up. But also another trend that we're seeing, if we skip to the next slide, is this conversation around faith, beliefs, religion. It's not just in the art world, in society in general. And this is happening around the world. What do we believe in? Why do we believe in that? What happens? in a society with diverse beliefs or with no faith at all. And here I put in Zahrab Salamzada again, because I find this quite interesting. It's a continuation of the same emotion that he's taking in the carpets, which he cut into pieces in one of the previous slides. Here, this is called, um, 
the thread of our beliefs and the threads that are connecting Judaism, Christianity, and Islam to what he perceives as God in the sky, the threads have been cut. So this is his way of expressing his grief that the organized religion has been cut off from God's message. The next one, Orhan Husseinov, this is a very interesting one around the concepts of faith, his paradise series. He talks about religions promising us humans a paradise with rivers and birds flying and sun shining and all the beautiful food. And he says, well, in today's world, we can get all of those things in luxury places, in five-star hotels. Where does the organized religion take us from here then? Where do the promises take us from here? The next one, again, from Orhan Husseinov, and this is one of my favorite pieces by him, by the way, he works with handmade plexiglass. This one is called Launch. It's a mosque that is taking off to the sky. It's a spaceship mosque. And he asked the question, does your faith, do your beliefs really matter if you leave the earth? If you're an astronaut outside of your planet, does your religious identity still make sense to you? The next one, what I see happening everywhere across sectors is we are finally seeing value in humans, in our individual experiences, in our individual fears and happiness. And we want to know each other's stories. We want to know how we're coping, how we're moving forward. We want to find ourselves in another person's stories. So here I wanted to compare the Azerbaijani artists from the 70s and Azerbaijani artist, uh, uh, photographer of today. This is Maral Rahmanzada's painting. She was uh, one of the first uh, edu formally educated female Azerbaijani artists of the Soviet period. She traveled Azerbaijan extensively, which was very rare for a woman of those times. And she uh, depicted the landscapes and people and specifically women of those regions and villages. So she went to Khanalakh, which is a village in Northern Azerbaijan with its own people, its own language, and she depicted its landscapes. And in the next slide, you will see women from Khanalakh. But this was a more generic, if you go back, let's see, to, and back. Okay, this one. So this is a more generic story of what women collectively are doing in the field. We don't, we don't zoom into their lives much. We don't see anything happening in their personal life. We just see them in the field carrying water, happy, and we see beautiful landscapes. Recently, this year, Chichek Bayramlu, a young Azerbaijani photographer, went to that village and did a series of photographs from Khanalakh village. And we see the difference, the shift in how we perceive the world now. And if you look at Chichek's photographs, we, we're now in their houses. We're in their living rooms. If you move to the next one, we're in their kitchens. We're, we're looking into their eyes and we want to know their stories. If you look into the next one, we want to understand what they're thinking about. And the next one, we want to understand what they're contemplating about. What are they worried about? What are they happy about? And this is the shift in consciousness that's happened in the last few decades. And what else I see happening in the art world globally is we are now very interested, very much into human emotions and emotions that were deemed ugly or inappropriate before are now becoming the centerpiece of art because we're becoming comfortable with ourselves. So we now can look at art that depicts our emotions that we were scared to express before. Here I have used Vinera Vilova's recent painting again, which is called Rage. And we know that in the society, women aren't allowed to be angry, aren't allowed to express rage. If we do, we're called ugly, we're called too aggressive, uh, we're called too intimidating. And this is Gunel expressing women's rage. She's an angel, she has wings. 
but her wings are bleeding from her anger because she can't express it freely. And she's turned her back to us. She doesn't want us to see her face again, like in most of her other paintings. But she's holding her horns and pulling them down with anger. But we see the angry eyes on the side. She can't keep her anger in much. And Afsana, I wanted to jump in here and, you know, of course. Our, our discussions have um, really focused on um, how this is bring being brought forward by female artists as well. So this is another artist, Shahmaz Agayeva, who is focused similarly um, to Gunel on female emotions and trying to express the trauma that women experience in their personal lives. And she's created recently the series of um, woodcut prints where she's focused on women's hair. And hair in this context is seen as emblematic of female beauty. And when a woman has beautiful, long, lustrous hair, this means that she has everything under control. You know, her life is going well. And in this series, Shahna shows us a woman whose hair is tangled and it's a mess. And she's combing her hair as a way to solve her problems, to deal with her emotions, to create the space of being able to cope with what she's being faced with. Um, and in these works, Shahnaz really focuses on that trauma and how women are trying to express it, um, which again is a new trend that we are beginning to see. I love that. And continuing on this conversation around emotions, I've called this trend freedom because I feel like all over the world, we are now seeing people growing to the next level, refusing to people please, refusing to become what the society wants us to become. There is a cry for freedom to just be, to just be human, to just be me. And this cry is being expressed very extensively by the artists around the world and by the artists in Azerbaijan. Here I have used, as the first one, I have used Sitara Ibrahim Daili's performance. She is a photographer and she did a performance on women, women's rights, a video where the artist is writing all over her body, all the discriminatory and sexist terminology that we're using in our everyday language. And what's very powerful to me is she ended that video with halal written on her forehead. The next one I put in here is by photojournalist Ahmed Mukhtar and his photo series called Working Women. And these are women mostly working in the fields, in agricultural fields. And as a caption for these photos, he used the sentence by the time you finish looking at this photo, hundreds of women will be abused, violated, and killed. And you see women working. In the next one, you see women looking at Ahmed, not in the camera. You see her hands, you see her work, and you see her eyes. And this is what Ahmed wanted to capture. The next one I put in here, which I really love, is by young film director, short film, documentary film director, Lala Aliyeva. She traveled to Northern Azerbaijan to a village in Gusar and lived there for several weeks. And she talked and wrote down the stories of local women. And this is a shrine near the lake. And in that documentary film, the lake is talking to us. That's why the film is called, They Whisper, But Sometimes They Scream. So the women come to this shrine near the lake and share their stories, their fears, their worries. And she has used stories of, I believe three, two or three women where the lake is telling us their stories. So they whisper, sometimes they scream, is a fantastic 20 minute documentary film by Lala. And here we have also an image from um, a film that was made of a performance by artist Vusal Rahim. And he is primarily a performance artist, but very interested in gender and, and how gender can be a trap for many people, how it can be very confining. And in this case, 
he recreated a wedding um, with a young woman uh, trying to deal with the issue of early marriages. So when women are very young, they're sometimes married off um, as a way for them to, um, you know, not bring any kind of uh, shame onto their family and to also kind of keep the family's honor. Um, and so he wanted to bring this to the forefront. And through this performance, which was an entire wedding, um, he went through all of the different steps of the traditional Azerbaijani wedding to highlight kind of the growing horror of what this must be like for young women who are forced into these situations. And is that why they're wearing black? Yes, mm -hmm. for the black wedding. Mm -hmm. Then in the next slide, we're looking at a piece by artist Agil Abdeliev. And he is an artist who works primarily in digital art um, and film and multimedia. And he's one of the artists who's beginning to explore queer identity as part of uh, a larger kind of discourse about gender and identity in Azerbaijan and, and across the world. So in this piece, which is called Loud Sirens of the Caspian Bodies, part three, he started to engage with this idea that he calls Azeri futurism. So very similar to Afrofuturism. So looking at the history of culture, um, looking at this kind of tension between tradition and modernity and what that means. And then also thinking about what it means to be part of a diaspora. So going away from your culture and reflecting on it. And then having all of that mediated through technology. So with all of these different things, how can queer identity look in the future? Can it look different than it did in the past? Can it be more visible? And with this work, he's showing an alter ego who represents this queer identity kind of grappling with all of these things. And this is another work by Agil, and this is called Allies Wear Rainbow Pen. And it is a film, um, it was created this year and in this, he has a dialogue between a group of friends who are talking about queer identity and imagining a different future where being an ally is part of your social responsibility. So not just being a friend to your peer, but it's important for all of society that you are an ally and that perhaps together, everyone can start to create a different future. That's very powerful. I think now we have come to your last trend, um, mm -hmm. Sana, nostalgia, which is one um, that I think is a really great way to end this discussion. So I don't know if you have anything that you'd like to say right now, or I can just launch into my thoughts. I wanted to add this trend because there are artists who are looking into the past without the need to celebrate it or without the need to reject it, but more like as a matter of fact, embrace it. So that's why I wanted to add this part to the end, which and I, I think, will end with a particular work, but I know you wanted to talk about this. Yes, artist. so exactly, Afsana. There are artists who are, who are kind of um, examining what it means to be Azerbaijani today and how the past has come before it and thinking of this in a very kind of humorous, um, but also respectful and, and honorific way. So this is an artist, Samir Salahov, and he is a street artist, he is a digital artist, um, and he also creates work on canvas. Um, but these works in particular, I wanted to show because he did these as part of a project um, where he painted walls in a neighborhood in Baku and painted them with these characters from the past. And Afsana, when we were talking, you said that these characters resonate with you very strongly. So on the left, we have the fisherman, and on the right, we have uh, a man, and this is called Passing By. Um, and they are, as you mentioned, emblematic of something that you kind of remember from your own history and childhood. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. These were, and um, we talked about the subcultures in Soviet Azerbaijan. And one of the subcultures is what we call the Gadesh subculture, uh, which has kind of disappeared. And he is looking back at that subculture and recreating the images and people from that culture with the beads in their hands. And Azerbaijanis watching this will recognize the images immediately. And what's so interesting about him as an artist is as he's doing this, he's using a variety of media. 
So with the street art, you can kind of come across these figures and these characters in your daily life. And then here he's created a digital animation. And this is a still from that animation. So where the, the man is, is kind of um, threading the beads through his fingers. And this work is called Kinetic Beads. So he's very much kind of showing a practice um, that is something very emblematic of Azerbaijani culture. That's wonderful. And here I added the Granny's vocabulary series from Sarhat Sarzeliev's recent work. And I, and I, the moment I saw this work, I loved it. He basically took the sentences that our grandmothers used with us and put them as lights on old Soviet time tablecloths. And Azerbaijanis watching this now will recognize these sentences definitely. And I could hear my grandma saying them to me the moment I saw this project and I loved it. So I had to share it. This is, this one says, it says, don't run too fast, you will sweat. And the, the, the caring grandma that's always trying to feed you and make sure you don't get sick, make sure you don't fall over. And this one says, and there's the English version afterwards which he did for the London exhibition that he's going to have in Gazelle Art House there. Have your meal before going to play outside. So this is a fantastic way, I feel like, to end this presentation with a look back, a nostalgic look back to the love that we have received from our grandparents. Thank you, Afsana. These pieces are really great. And I think that even if you don't speak Azerbaijani, they really resonate. Um, kind of globally, and we can yeah. all kind of yeah relate to um, to the nostalgia of when we were children, and the kind of the visual of the of the textile, the texture of the textile, and then of course the neon, um, which was yeah. a part of many of of our early lives exactly uh, around us. All right, well, thank you, Alfsana. Thank you, Leslie, for the conversation. Uh, Okay, now, are we going to? Yeah, I talk? think we can take some questions. If you have any questions for us, Barbara. I do, indeed. No, I was waiting to see if, if we were coming up. Um, what my question to you is, it's uh, obvious from the presentation today that there is incredible emphasis now on psychology and anthropology, behavior, um, a change in the society that the artists want to exercise their talents in order to create change. And um, what, given what you have now seen and how much of a difference there is in the kind of art that you're showing today, as opposed to earlier on in these uh, sem seminars, uh, what do you think is the major, major change that you are looking for? I can um, start, if that's all right, Afsana. I think that a lot of the artists today are really looking for um, recognition of gender issues is a main one. And that's kind of tied up, tied up in a lot of these different themes. And, you know, this is something that both men and women are looking at, um, at men, women, and, you know, non-binary non people are looking at in their art. And they're very much focused, as Afsana was saying, on their community. So, you know, to go back to what Agil is doing in his work, um, you know, allies wear rainbow pin, he's really trying to imagine a better future where everyone is equal where everyone supports one another and where society is this very nurturing place. And it does seem perhaps, um, you know, a bit altruistic and inspirational, but I think that artists are the ones who steer us in this direction. And the works that these artists are creating are very important to help that conversation happen um, in a different way, you know, in a much more kind of public sphere. Mm. There's some very beautiful, fascinating, and interesting pieces there. <clears throat> and um, Afsiana, I'm sure you have some comments to make on that. 
yes, I, I, I agree with Leslie completely. And just to add to that, and I, I feel like artists want to be left alone to construct their individual identities without being told to connect that identity to the collective one or to the culture or to the tradition. They want to be left alone to choose whether they want to bring what we call the traditional to their art or leave it and construct a new piece. This is, this is the trend that I see as well, that they just want to be left alone and this is what needs to happen. Mm. So, so we've heard a very powerful story today, just wonderful and extraordinary um, freedom of expression. Um, women's voices are coming forward and being heard. Um, and I, we have another question along those lines um, to you both. Um, how optimistic are you that the movement will be able to continue to grow in the coming years? Good question. <laughs> I can take that first or right. Leslie, did you want to say something? No, go for it and then I'll follow up. I, I just I just wanted to say I'm super optimistic because now we are opening up to the world and we're branching out to the world, be it art fairs, um, collaborations with other artists, museums, international projects, and the talent in Azerbaijan is growing. So I'm super optimistic about what is happening in the future with all these networks growing and the artists grow globally working together, listening to each other, learning from each other. I agree. In fact, I think that there's never been a better time for this, you know, for the artists working in Azerbaijan. Um, as you mentioned, Afsana, there's a lot of different platforms that artists have been able to kind of use to show their work. And I think that also just digital platforms and social media have gone quite a long way to share Azerbaijani art across the globe. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly with the pandemic, when art fairs and you know, Biennale stopped for a year, there was a real kind of uh, desire to keep showing your work, of course. And so we saw a lot of artists all over the world who really adopted the digital platform as a way to show their art and a way to reach you know, a different audience and to, I would say, perhaps even engage more with their audiences. Uh, because it's not just seeing work in a fixed place. There's an opportunity now to see it, um, you know, or for anyone to see it anywhere, anytime. So in this, in this sense, I'm very optimistic because I think that artists now have found a way where they can get their ideas out on their own. They're not so dependent on the very traditional kind of um, art world forms of showing work and uh, you know, having your work kind of as part of a discourse. They're creating their own discourse in this way. Just having seen from the very beginning the art that you were showing, there have been two of these uh, seminars. This third one makes such a difference in what is being shown, what is being offered, what is being adventured forward. And um, it's very, very impressive how even <laughs> during these few of seminars that you've created, how the art has changed and how it's reached out to the community at large. Yes, cl clearly it's a very exciting time in Azerbaijan. And, um, you know, as, as Azerbaijan becomes much more prominent in the global art scene and uh, it's all good news. And it's a, it's a wonderful statement of how far the country and the culture have come in expressing itself um, on a global stage. So um, I want to thank everyone so much for all the all the work that's gone into these three seminars and our three salons. And I especially want to thank Barbara and Leslie and Afsana. And also a thank a huge thank you to Asia Scotland Institute for hosting our salon series. And I also would especially like to thank our audience. Uh, our aim has been to showcase the brilliant artists and tell their stories over the course of nearly 100 years during a time of repression and then an era of supportive emergence of the modern and contemporary art movement of Azerbaijan. Thank you all so much for joining us. Huge thanks. <laughs>